Hey, how are you? My name is Emilio and thank you so much for joining me today. I work in technology and I absolutely love it and hopefully you do too. Hence why you're watching this video. This video, we're gonna be talking about how do you get into technology? We're gonna be covering my recommendations for you to take that plunge, to take that step and how to get into the technical industry, into the IT industry. We're gonna be talking about that today. We'll check that out right after this. So if you're just starting out, you've either wanting to get into technology, you've just started out in technology, you're just excited about computers in general, and you wanna know, well, how do I get into that job? How do I get that job? The first job is always one of the hardest to land. I'm gonna give you my top 10 recommendations. These are top 10 things that I put into place myself when I was starting off in technology, and I'm very, very glad that I put these into practice so that I could get that first job and then move up in my career in technology. So before we even get started, one of the most important things is for you to have a passion about technology, a passion for IT. If you don't have a passion for it, if you don't want to learn more, if you're not a bit of a tech nerd, then maybe this isn't the right career for you. You need to have a passion, a excitement for technology. Technology is awesome. Things change so quickly. And hey, to be able to be part of the industry and have a say and have a part and playing with this tech is awesome. So I would recommend, for, before we even talk about these top 10, is get excited about technology. Number one is to read read, read, read stuff, read stuff online, read books, go on to forums, blogs, read articles, read news headlines, get up to date with what's going on in tech. Things change so quickly. So if you're up to date, if you're reading stuff, if you're actively you know, in Reddit forums, if you're actively reading stuff that Microsoft, that Apple, that Google, that all of these tech companies are releasing, going and reading stuff about cybersecurity, what are the latest breaches, what's all this stuff that's happening in technology, reading and learning a lot of that stuff will definitely help you. That's one thing. The other thing is around reading tech stuff. So go and actually skill yourself up in, in specific technologies, right? That could be opening up a book on a specific technology. So then you got reading books. Go and reading books on a specific technology, on a specific hardware, on specific software. You may wanna get certified in the future. We'll start reading about that stuff now because you need to have some of that theory to then put certain things into practice. Number two is to watch online videos. I did this so much. When I was starting off in my career, I was online all the time. Hey, you're watching this video online. Thank you for joining me and watching my channel. Why don't you go and look at some online video courses? Here's another little plug. Check out my description below because I've got a whole bunch of training courses about all things technology. Online courses that you will find helpful if you're wanting to get in technology, you're wanting to learn more, why don't you go and check out some of my training courses because we cover a lot of material in there. So watch stuff online, watch my channel, watch other people's channels, watching somebody demo something, watching somebody explain a particular technology. I find that a lot better. That's the way that I learn and hopefully that's helpful to you. Number three is to be a good communicator. Be good at customer service. If you're gonna be getting into technology, right, you need to be able to learn how to talk to people. You know, a lot of people will start off in technology in a, in a help desk role, for example. They're gonna be answering calls, they're gonna be working with people, troubleshooting issues, things like that. Well, you have gotta learn how to talk to people. Being a great communicator is gonna take a long time. It's gonna take years. I'm still learning how to do it. I still speak to people in the companies that I've worked with, external people, consulting, etc. And sometimes I still get it wrong and don't say the right thing. So it's just a recommendation to you get better at your communication because it's gonna help you a lot as you go into technology. Don't talk tech to non-tech people. This is sort of a follow-up to the last one around communication, but now you're gonna be talking to people, you're gonna be working in technology, you're gonna be talking to people who don't understand technology. All right, so you're gonna to need to translate your tech speech, tech speak into non-tech. Right, because you're gonna start talking about all of these terms that they've got no idea. You're gonna be mentioning RAM and memory, and even though they're the same thing, but people don't know these things, you're gonna be talking about these sort of things and people won't know what you mean. So you need to understand how to not talk tech 
to non-tech people. Very, very important. And this is something that I wish I had have done more often when I was starting out. You assume that people understand what you're talking about when you're talking about the CPU and the hard drive. They've got no idea. So don't assume that when you're troubleshooting, when you're speaking to somebody, that they will know exactly what you're talking about. So you wanna make sure that your excitement about tech and all of the tech jargon uh, doesn't interfere with how you are communicating with people that you're supporting in an organization. Number five is learning the operating systems. It's elementary, it's foundational to understand the basics of the core operating systems that are out in the market today. All right, you're at home, you're in a business, you're generally gonna be running Windows, Windows 10, you're gonna be running Mac, Mac OS, you could be running a version of Linux, such as Ubuntu or CentOS, or Red Hat or something else like that. I wouldn't say you become an expert in everything. You don't have to become an expert on everything. You know, I think as you, you know, progress in your career, you'll get better at these sort of things. But if you're gonna be working for a company, now whether that is a small company or a larger company, if you understand the, the operating systems themselves, if you at least understand Windows and you understand, and you understand Windows pretty well, and you understand the Mac, you're in a very, very good position, especially if you understand the Mac. A lot of technical people don't wanna know anything about the Mac, so they're just gonna focus Windows, Windows, Windows. But in reality, a lot of companies have got a mix of both. So getting a good understanding on how to use the Mac, how to use Windows, and Linux is just like a little bonus. Now, you can go even deeper and start to understand and learn the, uh, the server operating systems, such as Windows Server and the Linux servers, but that's something that will sort of come as you progress in your career. Your goal, of course, is just to get into technology. So those server technologies will come later. Just focus on the client operating systems, Windows, Mac, and maybe some Linux. The next one is around hardware. Now we're specifically talking about desktops and laptops. You can talk about a lot of other sorts of hardware, but you're primarily in the first case, if you're wanting to move into technology, have a good understanding of laptops and desktops. Understand the differences between a desktop and a laptop. Understand the different ports, right? The back of a desktop, the back of a laptop, there's a whole range of different ports. Inside of a desktop, there's a whole bunch of stuff. There's a hard drive, there's some RAM, there's a CPU, there's a motherboard. Learn about all of that. Little plug, if you check out a video up here, right at the very top, I've done a full video specifically around the differences between a laptop and a desktop. Outside and inside, there's a couple of videos up there. So do check those out if you wanna learn more about that. But learning about hardware is something that is super, super important. Because great to know the operating systems, great to know Windows, great to know Mac, but you also need to know the hardware itself. That's pretty, pretty important. And with both of those technologies, learn how to do troubleshooting, all right? Great, you know how to install Windows, perhaps. You know how to um, install an application. You know how to maybe open up a computer and install some RAM. But what about when things go wrong? What if a user calls you and they need something done? You being the IT person, you're expected, unfortunately, you are expected to know everything. So you're gonna get people calling you for certain things. And the more you know, the better. Things are gonna be broken. People are gonna need help. So you having a good understanding around troubleshooting will definitely, definitely help. So the next one, which is one that I super, super, super highly, highly recommend is to build your own lab. This is at home. I would recommend doing this at home. Build your own lab. You've got some old PCs, some old laptops, set them up in a lab, right? Configure them with some technologies in there that you're not familiar with and get yourself skilled up. So it's one thing to learn the things and read things and watch videos and understand the basics of troubleshooting of hardware and software, but it's another thing having your own lab at home and showing that you're actively learning all of these new technologies. If you're wanting to learn more around how to build your own lab and maybe give you some ideas around getting started, look at the video right up there. Another one that I did earlier around how to build a lab. What should be a lab, uh, what should be in a lab and what sort of technologies you could look at building. But I'll tell you, if you're going for that technology job, if you're going in for an interview and you know these technologies and you have proven that you've built your own lab from scratch, you've configured it, you've delved into servers and all these other sorts of things, 
That is super, super impressive. Tell you what, I would wanna hire you if you had that ambition and, and drive to build a lab at home, uh, even though you didn't have real world working experience. Learn and understand what Active Directory is. Thousands and thousands of companies around the world. It's used quite heavily around the industry to manage a whole bunch of stuff. Now, if you do wanna know more, check in my description. One of my training courses is all around Active Directory. So you can watch that if you wanna learn more as well. Just a little tip there. It's a technology that is very, very sought after. And it's expected that people who want to move into technology should have Active Directory skills. So at least understand the basics, know what it is, how to use it, how to create users, how to create computers, how to reset accounts. Learning and understanding all of that is a really good thing. And now prepare a good resume. This is not necessarily a technical skill. Have all the information in there. Now I know you don't have the experience yet, but put in there as much as you can. Now that you have learned all of these new skills, you know, some of these things that we've talked about in these nine points, you can now put those as skills that you have learned, skills that you have developed. Yes, you haven't worked in these in a real life working environment, but that's fine. You have these skills now, and that puts you in a much stronger position than somebody who doesn't have those skills. If I had two people that were straight out of uni or straight out of college, one had no experience in technology, but likes technology, and one had no experience but likes technology, but also has built a lab and has actually configured Active Directory, hey, that's a really good thing. Um, and I would almost go for that second person. So have a good resume. And also with that is go online and look up some sample interview questions. What are some interview questions for a sort of role that you're looking at? What are some of the things that you should know based on these interview questions and try to answer them for you and come prepared. The interview is gonna be challenging, but if you're prepared, if you're confident, if you love technology and you've got those skills in place, you're gonna be a much stronger and better position to get that job. So that were my top 10 tips. Hopefully some of those were helpful to you. Hopefully you're doing some of them. If not, do all of them because they helped me and I know that they will definitely help you. Please do like, comment, subscribe, clicking on the button on the bell, do what you need to do on the social medias and also click on any of those other videos as well to check out all of my other videos on all things tech.